Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. And as I was browsing the hand history forms to look for something to make a video for you guys, I noticed that there was this nice three handed lineup with Nacho, Munez, and Stefan, which later on got joined by OTB. Uh, not OTB, sorry. Linus, the new OTB. So, I have to, to go over these hands, but unfortunately a lot of them are not super deep or super interesting, but still you have to go through them. And I think what I'll do is I'll try going through them quickly in any one of these that you guys feel like me going more in depth on. I'll be sure to do that. But meanwhile, we'll just do some, some fun, lighthearted commentary and see how many hands we can do, how quickly, and what pops up. So, let's go. Hand number one. Nacho raises button to 2.4. Stefan calls the big blind. We get a queen 6 7 rainbow board. Stefan makes a standard one third pot donk bet. Not standard. Something Stefan loves doing. You know, he develops his own game plans. They're not GTO, but because he studied them and the other guy hasn't, he's putting the other guy way out of his comfort zone, likely to make mistakes. So what you guys are seeing here actually is pro donk betting. It's not something you see very often. Nothing to do with GTO, like absolute zero. <laughs> I'm 100% sure no need to check any solvers or anything. So Stefan donk small, Nacho calls, and at this point we've kind of defined the ranges with the idea that Nacho 200 deep would have raised most of his stronger hands. Five of diamonds turned, Stefan over bets, Nacho calls again. Ace of Clubs River, Stefan bets one third, meaning however much he liked his hand on the turn, whether it's a strong top pair or a two pair, he now feels like it's devalued, so he wants to keep value betting but not as big. And these ranges are sometimes protected by stronger hands, so if Stefan has the straight, he might put it in this range, along with hands presumably like a top pair or a weak two pair where he, he feels like it's getting to be a bit too much. So Nacho calls, Stefan shows king queen for top pair good kicker. You know, the only thing we can do to, to make sense of the hand is ask, does the amount of money that went in fit king queen? The answer is, you know, pr pretty much yes, feels reasonable. And, you know, Nacho had some bluff catcher, who knows? 7 8, queen jack. It's not something in that area. Okay, next hand. Muniz versus Stefan. Muniz goes 2.25x button. Stefan defends. We get queen a3, two tone. Muniz bets the range bet size, so roughly one third. Stefan defends. Turn eight of spades and Stefan donk bets for 25%. Again, probably not GTO. Why? Because Muniz bet the range bet size, he's likely betting most of his range. And he has tons of eights in his range as well. So this, again, to me, and, and this one I haven't checked, but feels like not something that you should do almost at all. And I don't know if this is the size, because this small size indicates that you're doing this with a wide range. And yeah, this just feels inappropriate to me, but not sure about this one. But yeah, Stefan Donks, a pro donker. Muniz defends. We get the three of clubs river, so double paired. Stefan checks. Muniz fires out the 75% bet and Stefan calls. Stefan showing up with queen six of hearts. Again, you'll notice play makes sense for his hand on every street. You know, check all flop, donk small on the turn, and, and then check in river. You could also make a case for another small valley bet. And Moon is actually showing down sevens, which is certainly not a bluff. It's actually a very, very thin valley bet. And I'm not sure it's even an incorrect one. I think it, it's probably fine, given the amount of money that went in so far. Okay, next hand. Nacho versus Stefan. Nacho goes 240. Stefan 3 bets 4x or so, 4 and a half, 4 and a bit. Nacho calls. Jack 7 3, rainbow board. We see a half pot from Stefan. This means he's likely not betting his entire range, but certainly going to bet hands like, you know, ace, jack, king, jack, pocket, queens, pocket, kings, etc. Nacho calls, turn 10 of hearts. Stefan sizing down. Now, given they're 100 deep, this is not, again, a theoretically super appropriate size for the spot. Generally, you want to size down in spots where you want to value bet thinner. 
So maybe here Stefan is thinking he wants to bet something like 10-8, 10-9, pocket 8s, pocket 9s. I think most of his jacks could just go for stacks. So, and maybe jack 9, queen jack. But yeah, it feels like, you know, there are hands that fit this size, but it doesn't feel like a very theoretical size to me personally. And then Nacho calls, River Ace of Hearts, and Stefan goes for a tiny bet. Again, indicating he's just going razor thin. At this point, it's hard to imagine 8s or 9s or 10x, so presumably Stefan eking out his last bit of value with a jack, thinking that he's ahead when called, but he can't bet big, get him a run out. Nacho, of course, shoves. Stefan decides to call. Nacho shows 3s for a set, so, you know, make a set, call, call, shove over the, the block that seems very e easily played. Stefan shows pocket kings, standard 3-bet, standard c-bet. Like I said, personally I don't get the turn size, I would just not have the small size, but I'm sure Stefan knows what he's doing better than me. River ace, yeah, kings makes perfect sense, you are probably ahead enough, given the, the amount of money that went in to go for a little bit of extra value. And then facing the shove you have kind of nice blockers to call, blocking hands like ace, king, and king, queen. So yeah, seems like a, a, a nicely played hand by both. Next hand we have Nacho 240 from the button. Stefan 3 bets to 180 and Nacho defends. We get Ace, Deuce, 8, 2 tone. Stefan fires out with a 1 third pot, indicating he's probably betting his full range. I'm not sure you can do that on this board specifically, which is surprising because Stefan doesn't like to do these range bets in general. But yeah, I, I guess you can if he's doing it. Nacho with a small raise. Stefan 3 bets, Nacho shoves, and Stefan calls. So we would expect, you know, given the action, not many pure bluffs from either player. Definitely Stefan, who's calling, is going to have some sort of value hand. Nacho shoving over the flop 3 bet is mostly going to have a value hand. And, and you know, some of the value hands are just going to be flush draws, of course. But yeah, that's the idea. Nacho shows up with King Queen of Spades for a second, not flush draw. Very, very surprisingly played, to be honest. I can see the flop raise, but when you get 3 bet by Stefan, what's the idea of shoving given such good pot odds with a not to draw in position versus calling. I guess maybe Nacho thinks that king and the queen block ace king and ace queen and Stefan will have some sort of bluff that he'll fold sometimes that might beat king queen. Something like that, but honestly I find the shot a bit perplexing. I would have expected just a call. Stefan shows up with ace five of spades. Totally crushing Nacho, actually. And you know, if your opponent is stacking all flush draws in this fashion, playing ace 5 in this way is amazing, right? And ace 5 of spades, when you look at it here, it's a hand with several different properties, you could say. So it is a not flush draw that dominates all the other flush draws. At the same time, it's a weak top pair. And the combination of both of these make this just a very strong hand where you're probably flipping against a better ace, you're destroying any flush draw. Just a very, very strong hand. Again, I don't know if the solver would fast play it, in theory, but you can see how fast playing this crushes people who fast play flush draws, and Nacho was fast playing a flush draw, so in terms of adjustment game, this is a really well-played hand by Stefan, and he kind of caught Nacho uh, with his pants down, so to speak. Okay, I think that's enough hands for this video. There are a lot more of these, so we'll probably keep going later on. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.